talk about the, the work we are doing now. Uh, so this is a joint work my, with my colleague, uh, Professor Tian and Professor Zhou at the City College in New York. Uh, it's uh, mainly supported by National Science Foundation, but we also have other uh, funding sources, you know, to support us to do research on algorithms and uh, other designs. So here's the outline. I'm going to go over the, uh, give an uh, overview of the project, uh, map for vrt and uh, focus on three topics. The first one is the 3D sensing and understanding. Uh, for mainly the task is for navigation and arm reaching, so it's basically for the very basic uh, requirement for visually impaired people. The second thing is that I'm going to talk a little bit about our experiment for a multimodal and the alternative perception, the evaluation, the learning, the collection of the data, and finally I'll give a few you know, examples of both understanding object recognition, like a text, a side detection, so that is a close the picture for for, for the visual navigation for the blind. And finally, the uh, very brief summary. So it's an overview. So what we are doing is that it's not just uh, you know the novel sensor designs. So we design sensors. So we design algorithms. Uh, we also doing try to do multimodal machine learning. You know with the data input, the output, the label the data. Uh, we also do human subject evaluation. Uh, it's not just a combination of this. But we what we really want to do is that we want to figure out a machine co learning mechanism uh, for understanding the sensory motor model of human humans. Uh, so that we can, number one, we can develop uh, better assistive technologies for the visually impaired people. Number two is that we can understand, better understand the human brain. So this is the two goals. Of course, you know, by doing this, we really want to automatically collect the multimodal data, um, uh, you know, for human uh, and machine uh, perception and action, and uh, namely for the task of navigation, and, uh, and the other is uh, arm reaching. So with this in mind, we have this diagram, you know, we have three components in this research. We, we, we kind of put this together in one big picture so that, you know, in, the, in strat one we do <laughs> multimodal sensing, you know, different kinds of sensors for range, for magnetics, for thermal, for optics, you know, for recognition, all these things. Then we process it as a translated it into a, a way so that the people can convey the information to visually impaired people like auditory, you know, touch and other information. So that uh, then we uh, simultaneously put this uh, uh, piece of information, multimodal information to both the human, uh, real, you know, the human user and uh, machinery. So that uh, they do similar jobs. Then we, we, we measure the human activity uh, as well as their brain, uh, you know, the activity. So that we, you know, use, use the, the devices that use optical imaging, EEG, TMS, uh, MRI, uh, etc. cetera. So that we have the perfect data you know, when people performing the navigation task with the multimodal sensing uh, components, uh, we can measure their performance, measure their action, as well as measure their brain activity, so that which part of the brain you know, is active. Then finally, we feed the all, both of the information to the machine learning model. Uh, so the hope is that we try to use this as a data collection, data labeling mechanism automatically, so that we not only have input data, but have output data. Data, you know, most importantly, we have kind of data to know, you know, what what kind of modality works for the particular person, you know, doing navigation. So mainly, you know, for visual, audio, and other senses. So we hope that the very noisy, you know, brain data will review some of the information there, so that we can use those kind of information to input into the machine learning model, so that we. We don't just start with a random, you know, the initialization black box, but we somehow can tune the model, you know, tune the parameters, select the different modalities so that we can better uh, get a better model, better understanding of the human brain, you know, for some very basic, very simple task at the beginning. So this is the overall picture of our project. So for doing this, uh, we, you know, of course we have, the, you know, for navigation, you have the near observed detection you know, for close range for safety, right? We, of course, we use the sensor that uh, many, many people are using, the connect sensor, the stereo sensor. We also use very cheap range sensor, like infrared range sensor or, or just sauna, to get the information of the 3D environment 
uh, for safety, uh, you know, uh, navigation, obstacle detection. We also, of course, doing orientation, localization, use, uh, use uh, like uh, use maps, use size, use other information to get the orientation of the person, location of the person, and also some other geographic information of the environment so that uh, people can do planning of the environment. And finally, of course, we you know need to convey this information to the people who cannot see. You know, we mainly talking about the totally blind people. So that uh, we, you know, we, we have uh, collaborators uh, who are totally blind. Uh, you know, Barbara have the visual impaired uh, implant system, retina implants, and we also have tongue stimulator system. You know, working with us. We also design our system. Use uh, I think the one of them is showing up. I don't know if I assume it here. So use the uh, infrared and the vibro tactile so that the people can feel the range. You know, uh, of the surroundings. And with all this information, as I said, we want to somehow put all these devices to a person and move around to measure their performance. You may wonder, you know, how we do that, how we track them. Of course, you can use a camera system, use a tracking system, motion track to track people's uh, trajectories and their performance. But how to manage their brain? They are moving around. You know, we cannot use MR, we can use, not use EEG, you know, unless they are possible. So the idea we have is that we kind of virtual, virtualize all these sensors. You know, the robotic studio, Microsoft Robotics can do that, right? We can generate, simulate all these different kind of sensors and more other sensors. Uh, right now, we are use, using Unit 3D as a game engine you know, to do this. We designed virtual environment to simulate those sensors. So the sensors are done in, in simulation. But for stimulation part, the, the transducing part, we really have the vibro tactile, have the tongue stimulator, and the other, other devices hook on, up on the people so that the person can do navigation and get feedback to the virtual environment to do navigation in the virtual environment. By doing this, we can really, really measure human brain state there. So the advantage is that not just the, you know, for, for the feasibility, but also you know, if you don't move around, your brain activity is mainly connecting uh, in you know digesting the visual, I, I mean the sensing information. So this is the idea. So but so with all this, we can also you know of course we measure uh, humans all this visual information. We can design other sensors, simulate them, and also sight detection. You know for like long range the uh, localization, and also of course as as I said, we can measure their uh, humans' brain and uh, action. All this will fit into a sensory motion learning model. So this is the overall picture of our project. So next, uh, I think uh, I only have like 10 minutes. It will go through three, three kind of uh, you know, components we are doing. It's pretty similar to what the, uh, everybody is doing today. Uh, but we have some little bit of flavor of how we consider, you know, consider you know, translate the three different vision information to humans. So the first one, I'm going to talk about the 3D sense and understanding in the sense that if we have a stereo system, right? So we get the three dimensional information <coughs> and the color information. So the goal is to try to convey the information to the blind user, either through the visual retina implants, which is very low resolution now, like uh, Argos uh, second generation, right? It's six by 10. Uh, for the tongue stimulator, which also works, it's 20 by 20, but it's still low resolution. It's hard to understand what's going on. So the use regular sampling, you can see on the left hand side, you know, the, with this thing with the uh, uh, building facade, grass, a uh, box here, and a telephone pole in the close range, uh, that one missed, okay? So you, you may hit on that, okay? So, but if we get the 3D information, we have a special designed 3D zero vision system so that we segment all the patches, you know, in planar surfaces so that we, we know which one is closer, which one is important so that, so that when we do sampling, we can keep the important component which is closer, meaningful to in the same. Even if it's smaller, we can enlarge it, okay? So, of course, it's distorted the system, you know, the same little bit, but at least we keep that. Uh, we hopefully we can feed it to human. We did uh, some experiment in you know, for stereo vision. Uh, uh, we do the segmentation of the sensor. Uh, the, the green area are the unreliable area. So you can see that there's a tripod here in the front. If you do regular sampling, it's gone. Okay. But uh, if we do the smart sampling to try to keep it for the purpose of obstacle detection, it's still there in low resolution, 20 by 20. So this is the first one. Of course, stereo have, uh, have very low, you know, short range, like 10 meters, beyond the 10, 10 meters, with uh, 
hand mounted uh, stereo system is not working. Connect is five meters. I heard somebody said 20 meters. I would hope it can go 20 meters. I know people use range finder like go like 100 meters, but it is bunky and expensive, right? So what we want to do is that we use very traditional method. Just use a single camera, you know, that you can find it in a smartphone. And use this for indoor environment understanding. Uh, try to detect the strict lines for the corridor and the doors, the horizontal vertical lines. We use this to figure out a very, very simple model so that we can combine uh, multiple views to get a sense of what's the direction of the corridor, where are the doors. So this is kind of the indoor environment modeling efforts we do you know, recently. Uh, so this is uh, one image showing that how we detect the ground, the, the ceiling, and the doors. As far as like 50 meters away, so we actually can measure the 3D information just use the camera with a little bit of information about the, how high the camera is and how we hold the camera. That, that's it. Okay. So we do it from a single view, and then of course you can think you think you know if you have obstacles, people, uh, garbage cans, how you can still do it. Yes, you know, the vision people know, we can definitely do it, right? Because this is a global method, it's not just the matching all this. We do street light detection, you can see all these examples, a lot of people, garbage can, you know, people very big, so we can still detect the yellow lines represent the boundary of the corridor. So this is the work for 3D, we have some other work, like, like use connect, use you know, different mechanisms, I will not uh, skip them. So the Multimodal sensing, I will just show one example. We use the brain port, you know, tongue simulator, which is uh, awkward, you know, you put a piece of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the circuit, right, uh, 20 by 20 uh, stimulator on your tongue. You try to see the images there. So as I said, it's, it's a very simple uh, sampling method won't work, right? It lost the most information. And we also find that if we try to use it to recognize shapes, it's very hard, you know. We talk to people at the same U and uh, at the company, so brand, you know, the recap, it's very hard. They kind of say, you know, it's working, but what we find is that before training, it's just by chance, right? After the training, it's a little bit over the chance, it's 60%, but it's still not good enough. So we, we, uh, we, we use it in a different way, instead of doing object recognition, but we, we think maybe the tongue you know, can use it to guide the direction. After we use zero to do the smart sampling, keep the object, we find the trans tra transversible path, we give direction, you know, go forward, left, right, okay? So this thing we did, a lot of experiments there, so we found the three directions, is perfect. It's not almost uh, 95 percent, uh, you know, for three directions. So that's perfect. Then we use this for, again, you know, we use the virtual environment to collect the data. People just travel through the virtual environment with 3D data, so that you can go direction, go forward, go left, go right. Okay. So this, and uh, the result, we show a couple of subjects we did. You know, this take a long time to do the this uh, area. I think it's a 10 by 10 by 10, uh, 10 by 20 uh, meters. So, but uh, you know, it made, made it, okay? So a little bit of bumpy here, here and there, but uh, people can figure out how to go there, just use their tongue to guide, guide the direction. Uh, we are now doing the real, real experiment, use zero camera and, uh, and also the, uh, you know, the tongue stimulator to see if we can really do the real task. So why, why, why just use tongue? It's awkward, it's hard, right? So you, you, you uh, like a proper lollipop pop, 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 you know, in your mouth, you cannot talk. So uh, other way we, another way we use, of course, you can use some other auditory information, but when we talk with the blind people, you know, the users, they say that they don't like the auditory information, but but them all the time. So instead, we use the very simple thing, you know, you know the uh, vibrotactile belt, right? So we are not using belt, we are not using hand thing, all the thing. What we are using is that we kind of use a whole body range, vibrotactile, uh, you know, wearing system, so that you kind of have a surrounding of the field. So when you walk around, you can just freely walk around to feel the environment by yourself without any connection data processing. Uh, you know, for doing this, we do analysis of the sensitivity of this, and we also, you know, I will show you a demo real quick to see how we, we actually have the uh, the part is a small part, you know, uh, to put on the uh, users uh, at the New York Institute of Special Education, black black kids. Uh, they they love it. Okay, so they, they kind of really they got excited. So this is still big, but right now it's really like a, like a, like a shock, Okay. So you can see that uh, you don't have to hold it, you just hold it on the spot like one. You walk around, you feel the touch, okay? So, all right. It's a two one to learn. So, it's to learn to figure out how to use it. This one? Yeah, yeah.
It's different than from the constant rate. It's not a lot of training. So, there we go. So, it's different. Yeah, basically, the user is telling us how to use it. Basically, he's an athlete. He wants to play basketball using this system. So, we, we are actually students that are really started to start up our company. Uh, we were supported by the ICO and also some investors, you know, are very interested in this entire thing. Not just for black people, but for black people. Uh, so we, we, of course, we do some serious research, you know, we use the virtual environment to try to really collect the data to do machine learning. We also did the multi-model learning thing, you know, those are the more detailed things I, I will skip. I will just show you one more thing, you know, before I end. Then the standard object detection, we, we did the back note recognition by Professor Tian Tian, 100%, you know, it's not just full, it's, you know, even if part of them is now is, is warped, it's still working, right? I, I don't want to get into detail of this, text the extraction and recognition, uh, curve the surface, different scenario, different illumination, and also the side detection, you know, with different illumination again, and also the combination of door detection and the side detection for the indoor uh, navigation and the wide fighting. I uh, also did the test on uh, uh, the real subject, okay? The applied subject. And uh, finally, I give a summary, use this diagram. This is crowded here. But what I want to say is that we put the three components. We want to determine what is the best, the minimum set of sensory input, multi model sensory. You don't have to have every, everything, right? We want to select the best for a particular user. Number two is that meanwhile, we want to understand what kind of human brain representation for the perception and action in the particular application. And finally, we want to build up uh, the machine learning model, you know, so that we have both the sensory input data as a human feedback that automatically collected. So we hope that this will contribute to the community, you know, with data. People ask about the data set. We are kind of collecting this data to see if this is, will be useful. And uh, with the conclusion, you know, we, this is the team, uh, our team and the collaborators, students and the faculty members, and also the users and uh, also the funding support from National Science Foundation, IIH, and the uh, Federal Highway Administration and the Industry. Thank you. Questions? Chris. So you talked about a, a multimodal approach, and then you talked about a single camera perspective approach, and I kind of missed the balance. What you were you saying that the single camera was just as good as the multimodal, or what, what was the comparison there? Yeah, that's a good question. I didn't make it clear. So the cam single camera is one of the modalities. We have the camera, we have range sensor, we have connect, you know, different kind of sensor. We also have the range sensor on the body. So the idea is that you hook up that, you know, you have the camera or head, and maybe you have connect here. So we don't just want to by design say, hey, this is the best, by test a small set. We put all of them together, maybe test it one by one, maybe test them all together. The goal is that you know, we simulate all these sensors in the virtual environment or simultaneously that collect the data. Then we take turns to see you know, composition different way, so figure out what's the best. You, you, have, you haven't done that. We have done that. We collect some limited data, you know, for, for example, the uh, stereo and, uh, and also the vibro tactile data. So we haven't done any results yet. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Just one, just one quick question. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to... Um, get a sense of what you think the brain core tech interface was was sort of best suited for, what kinds of tasks in the future do you think, versus the vibrotactile things, they're very uh, different. Yeah, it's very different. So the town, you know, is supposed to have high resolution 20 by 20, it's, it's, you know, it's just by design, it's supposed to get a better understanding. You know, you got a two-dimensional array of the image so that you don't need to do any image understanding, right? You just uh, subsample that. That's why we do subsampling. I still don't uh, lose hope, but my colleague Tony, you know, because he's doing the real job, he feel like he's very frustrated there. He's more leaned towards the vibro tactile, what, what you, our lab designs. So we, we have the whole body. It's, you, you could put as many as you want. 
if you want to get a direction, you don't have to put it on the tongue, right? Left or right. You just put left arm, right arm. That's it. And also with the opposite detection. So we don't know yet, but uh, still think, you know, 20 by 20. Uh, so the, right now is that not just subsampling, but we think if you do some kind of dynamic, uh, you know, exploration, you know, you use tongue tips to explore that area, maybe run the dynamic, if you have obstacles there, you just uh, shake it, you know, run the boundary, maybe people can feel it better. We haven't done that. The problem is that the system we have, we run it, is very fragile, you know, we already shipped it back like a five ten times so 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 it, it's hard to do experiment we hope that if people have suggestions other better system you know we can use we can, we can. So, so the goal is that we actually want to evaluate what is the between these two for what is best for one particular task so we don't want to say you know this is not working okay. yeah? yeah thank you